We also have a second strategy for statistical inference. The problem with p-values is that p-value only answers the question is it likely or is it plausible that there is no effect in the population. But p-value doesn't really provide us any direct evidence of the uncertainty of the estimate of the effect. And therefore we have another strategy called confidence intervals. So a confidence interval is uh, an interval of two endpoints constructed around the, in, around the estimate. So here's an example of a confidence in interval. The estimate is 2.02 .02 and we have one endpoint that is below the estimate which is 2.01 and then another endpoint that is above the estimate that is 2.00. So that's an interval that says something about the precision of the estimates. Formally, the confidence interval is defined as an interval that is calculated in a way that if we repeat the sample over and over many times, then the true population value will fall within that interval 95% of the replications. So five times out of 100 replications, the population value would be outside the interval. So from this inference, we can, we can kind of infer that the population value is maybe somewhere within the interval. We can't say that it's precisely there in, in any formal way, but we can kind of infer that maybe it's there. So these intervals can also be used the same way as a null hypothesis significance test. So you can compare whether zero is included in, in the interval. So interval here is 2.01 and 2.03. Zero is not within the interval and therefore we say that the it's unlikely that the population value would be zero. To understand the confidence interval better, it's useful to understand it from the R uh, in the framework of, of the previous example. So we had the difference between our uh, men-led companies and women-led companies that occurs by chance only. Sometimes we get a large difference, sometimes we get a small difference. And these confidence intervals are intervals that are constructed around an estimate. So let's say an estimate is here then the interval could be here. So this interval would not contain the population value. The population value of zero is above the interval. These two intervals would co contain the population value and in this last interval constructed around this estimate the uh, population value falls below the interval. If the confidence interval is valid then uh, these intervals that include the population value, which in this case is zero, but it could be something else as well, will be 95% of the case. So five times out of 20, we get either this one or that one. So the population value is outside the interval. We can kind of informally infer that maybe the population value is somewhere within the interval, but we can't say it precisely. How these confidence intervals are calculated it's uh, one way, particularly com common way, is to use a normal ap approximation. So the idea of a normal approximation confidence interval is that we construct the interval so that we, it's the, it's the estimate minus 1.96, which is two, two standard deviations or, or the 95% um, the of, of the normal distribution times the standard error. So then the upper interval is, is estimate plus 1.96 times the standard error. Why we multiply with 1.96 is that th that way we get 95% of the normal distribution uh, within the interval. So the, the confidence interval estimate, we can just do a little bit of math and we can say that if that this is equivalent to comparing the estimate divided by the standard error to 1.96, which is the, the t-test basically. So there is an equivalence between a t-test or z-test to be more precise, which is a comparison against normal distribution instead of student's t-distribution. So if we just compare whether the confidence interval includes a zero or not, that is the exactly same thing as, as calculating a p-value and comparing it against 0.05. So doing a confidence interval doesn't make us any smarter. It's just the same thing in a slightly more complex way. If we can't assume that the estimates are normal, then 
these two approaches are not the same and there are techniques for calculating confidence intervals for that scenario as well. But the, it, the important thing to know about confidence intervals is that they are pretty useless if you just check where the zero is in, in the interval. There is a, a nice uh, quote in an article by Cortina that, uh, that who attributes the quote to, uh, to Thompson that if we were uh, to be as rigid with confidence intervals as we are with the p-values taking the 0 0.05 as gold standard then we would just be stupid on another metric. So doing confidence intervals without interpreting what the endpoints mean and just checking whether the zero is within the interval doesn't really make any sense whatsoever. The problem with confidence intervals and p-values is that both are commonly interpreted, misinterpreted. So the p-value is uh, the probability of obtaining the observed result if the null hypothesis is correct it is not the probability that the null hypothesis is correct. I will explain that more in another video. So if you guess uh, a die that is thrown correctly, it doesn't mean that you're clairvoyant. You could guess a die randomly. Confidence interval is an interval that will contain the population value with frequency of given confidence level. It is not the probability that the population value is contained within a particular interval. That's a different thing. Understanding why these are two are not the same is a bit more complicated, so I will not cover that, but we'll take a look at this in more detail. 